All right, so let's talk about how Lasix or furosemide works. So quick little review, afferent arterial into the capillary bed here that sits inside Bowman's capsule. The other end of that arterial comes out and it leaves Bowman's capsule, and this is the efferent arterial. And this vessel is going to follow the tubules of the nephron all the way through. So uh, like in the proximal convoluted tubule, we are able to reabsorb some of that sodium and glucose and chloride and potassium. However, we know we don't absorb all of it, right? Some of it is still going to make its way down this uh, descending limb in the loop of Henle. So as we go down this descending limb, these cells are only permeable to water. So water is able to leave, but you're probably wondering, why would water want to leave if sodium is still inside the tubule? And that's because the deeper you get into the medulla, the saltier it gets. It's very salty as you get down if you were to take a big bite of it, which you should never do. Um, but it gets really salty, and that's what these little uh, these little white things represent. Imagine these are like your, your little sodium or sodium chloride uh, little uh, particles here. So we go down and a lot of that water is going to come out here and it'll get reabsorbed back into uh, the efferent arterial. Now, why is there so much sodium here? How did that even get there? Well, if we look at now the ascending limb on the loop of Henle, you'll see along these, and I just like split this one open for you to see it, but as you're coming up, any sodium that's made its way through the proximal convoluted tubule, obviously sodium didn't leave here because it's only permeable to water. As that sodium is coming back up, there's something that transports the sodium, potassium, and chloride. It's an active transport process out of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle and it's called the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. So it's very easy to remember because that's exactly what it is. And what it, it act, what it does is it actually takes sodium, potassium, and chloride, actually two chlorides, and it takes them from the tubule and puts them out into the interstitium here so they can get reabsorbed into uh, the efferent arterial. And not all of it is gonna get reabsorbed, a lot of it's just gonna stay here. And that's what makes the water wanna come out of the descending limb is because you got this real salty environment here in the interstitium. All right, so what does Lasix do? Well, Lasix turns off those sodium potassium chloride co-transporters. So imagine I just kind of block this off, right? So now I'm not gonna have as much sodium leaving so that's gonna make this environment here not as salty, right? So I can take, I'll take some of this salt out and a lot of this sodium and a lot of these uh, sodium and chloride and stuff like that is going to end up inside the urine. And this is like my collecting duck here. So a lot of it is going to end up in the collecting duck. And so if this is not as salty, if I'm not spitting out these little uh, salt molecules, then water isn't going to want to leave, which means a lot more water is going to remain in those tubules. And so that water is going to follow the sodium. And so that's why it's considered a diuretic because now you're going to be getting rid of a lot more water because this environment now is not as salty. All right, so let's talk about how vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone works. It actually works on the collecting duct right here. And I generally don't think of the collecting duct as an area where things get reabsorbed back into the body. I would imagine if, if I made it all the ways to the collecting duct and I was still here, that I'm probably going to end up in a toilet somewhere um, because you don't generally think of things getting reabsorbed back into the, uh, the body. However, that's exactly where vasopressin works. So what vasopressin does is it makes these little aqua pores, and it does this through a G protein transcription. It's very complicated. Uh, all you need to know is it works right here inside this collecting duct. And so imagine if I were to just like put some little holes here, these little aqua pores. And what that does is it then allows the fluid that's in here 
to be reabsorbed back into the body. And remember, this is a salty area out here, so the fluid will go if I have these little pores here, these little aqua pores. And, and to be uh, even more accurate with this, there's actually two layers. And so uh, the posterior layer is always got pores, but it's this first layer here that doesn't. And so this gene transcription, when vasopressin goes in, it works on the V2 receptors. It makes these little aquapores that then allows the fluid to come out of the collecting duct and then to get reabsorbed. And that's why you see vasopressin make people not uh, pee as much. And it tells the body, hey, we need to uh, keep this volume because either the uh, the serum Oz is just getting too high and it needs to be diluted or there's an actual problem with blood pressure so it works in the collecting duct